everybody. Deborah King. Welcome to today. All about medical intuition. Glad to see everybody. You guys can hear me, right? See some nods. Hope you're having amazing fall weather wherever you may be or spring if you're down under. Huh? Uh, it's fabulous in California right now. I got to say, I love the fall. It's my favorite season. So it's always been my um, experience as a uh, I was a human being and a practitioner and a teacher that I'm best off if I am well-educated. I never believe that you should stick your head in the sand. I think we should know a lot about what's going on around us in the world. And with that in mind, I thought today uh, uh, to discuss medical intuition, I'd start off by talking about some of the newest Western medicine modalities because we need to know about them, whether you're thinking of them for yourself or your mother's thinking about it or your significant other or your children or your clients if you are uh, in some uh, field where you um, are in the helping professions, you want to know about this stuff. You, know, you want to be up to date and up to speed. So as you probably are aware, um, there's these new weight loss drugs, right, that have become really big this, this year. And um, the question is, you know, are they safe? Are they effective? What are the side effects? And what would our alternative world offer instead? our world, right? And, you know, like it or not, uh, uh, everybody's talking about them and everybody's thinking about them. So we need to be educated. So it's really interesting. Um, I did my research in preparation for speaking to you today, and there are more than 9 million prescriptions written last year for Ozempic. <laughs> That's a lot of prescriptions, you guys. That's a lot of medicine. And it's a twin weight loss drug, away Wegovi, not to mention the off-market ones, which I'll talk about in a second. So the first thing we want to know is, well, you know, what, what is a patient's experience? I've got a little, um, a little, um, Dina's got it. Dina, you've got my little PowerPoint if you want to. I think you've got it. I'm not sure you've shared it with me. Maybe I'll share it. I'm not seeing her right now. She might be busy. Oh, Dina's got it up. Okay, cool. So um, this first gal, uh, you see her name there at the bottom of the screen probably. Um, her name is uh, Pepper Schwartz. Uh, she doesn't have type, type, type 2 diabetes. Now, type 2 diabetes is how this drug was recently dis discovered as it was originally found it was helpful with people with type two. Uh, it helps them regulate their sugar. And then the next thing um, the medical world found out is you lose weight while you're on it. And um, Pepper started using it because her primary physician prescribed it, not because she's type two. She's lost 30 pounds. Pretty obvious, isn't it? From the photo. And she's in her late seventies, uh, you guys. And, um, lives up in uh, Washington. And she says, this has been great for me because it's, you know, my blood pressure is lower and my cholesterol is lower and I eat less. And, um, and so that's her motivation. So um, the interesting thing about these two drugs is that they also um, not only lower blood sugar, but they also reduce heart attacks and strokes. So they reduce the risk. Uh, this is a gal who's working, and uh, so there you have her. Now, the next gal is um, Jamel. Let's go to the next uh, slide, uh, Dina. And um, Jamel weighed 225 pounds at the start, and now she's down to 165. You can obviously see the difference. Um, and she turned to this medication to lose weight, again, not for type 2 diabetes, um, and she said, don't believe what you read on social media. You have to do the work at the same time. You have to, you know, change your diet and, and increase your exercise. Um, and she works out every day, five, five days a week. So uh, her weight loss is stabilized, but she's decided to stay on this drug long term. And I'll tell you more about that in a second, why she might make that decision. So the third gal that we pulled is Janine. There's Janine. And Janine, unfortunately, had one of the more rare side effects, which is the gauntness in the face. That's not good, right? Uh, that wasn't a side effect she was looking for. Uh, she's only 40. And um, uh, she was actually prescribed Ozempic for medical reasons. She, was, um, she had um, 
um, insulin resistance, which is a, a form of adrenal uh, hyperplasia. And so it wasn't for weight loss that she was put on this medication. Uh, but she's lost 30 pounds, whether you like it or not. She said she stopped taking the drug because of the side effects. And she works in the hospital. So, so far, all these gals um, are working gals. I thought that was pretty interesting. Notice no men, right? No men so far. Um, now, the next woman, um, um, is it Barbie? Is that the next gal or is it? Uh, yeah, it's Barbie, right? Uh, she's in her early 50s and she's lost 180 pounds pretty visible. Uh, she was, once weighed over 400 pounds. So here is someone who you might really think this drug might be very appropriate for. Um, she's been on it for almost two and a half years now, and um, her weight might have killed her, right? So here, here you can see that uh, this, this uh, weight loss drug or diabetes drug with the side effect of weight loss might might actually have have some you know some benefits for a, a part of the market, and then the last gal is um, Wendy, and um, Wendy um, has lost twenty five pounds, and she's really worried she's going to regain it because this these, these two drugs do have a habit of um, uh, let, letting the, the pounds come back on plus a few more. Okay, that's so common, right? Um, she too works and her uh, insurance only pays for about half the cost of these drugs. So she's worried that when she's no longer able to afford them, that uh, her, her, uh, her weight will balloon back up. All right. So I think the photos uh, help a lot, right, to understand what's going on here. How does the drug work? They reduce your appetite. You don't feel like eating. And you feel full sooner, and it affects your hormones, which is probably not a good thing. Uh, it also slows down the way your stomach empties. So, again, you don't feel hungry as soon as you normally would. And they're very much in demand. There's so much in demand that I want you to know about this, uh, especially for your loved ones, is now they're available off-market from what are called compounding pharmacies. Now, you and I already know about compounding pharmacies. Chances are you've already used one for something. And you're thinking, oh, they're safe, you know, they're the, that little place where they, you know, compound the, the, the drug just, uh, you know, exactly the way uh, my doctor wants it or the way I want it. You want to be really careful about compounding pharmacies. They're not all they're cracked up to be. D do look into the one that you're using or your loved one or your client is using uh, because they, they can compound things using the wrong ingredients or, or inferior ingredients or cheaper ingredients. So don't, don't assume that because it's from a compounding pharmacy that it's safe. But what the compounding pharmacies have gotten into are um, uh, getting uh, cheaper versions of Ozempic's main ingredient and marketing it uh, for half to a third of the cost. And you can get them right online. You, you can order this stuff on off a website, which is a very scary thought that you would not be, be uh, followed by a medical doctor and taking such a you know, serious drug. I would not recommend that. I want you to know about this because if, if it's not uh, something that you need to for yourself, you will have friends, relatives, and clients who will be flirting with this and you want to be informed. Uh, you don't want to be a naysayer, but you want to be informed um, so that you can, you can be a good guide, so you can help people. So, um, you know, this is a real uh, unique situation, right? We're, we're so drug-driven, aren't we, in the Western world. The side effects of these two drugs are <laughs> they're pretty bad. The most common ones are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain. Those are the, the four most common. And, of course, there are obviously more serious side effects. You can get pancreatitis or, you know, gallbladder disease or a host of things, like you can from any drug, right? Uh, but the typical side effects are all stomach involved and make you even less likely to eat, even less likely. So here's how modern medicine looks at this problem. We have to look at it from their point of reference. They say obesity is a chronic illness, like 
diabetes, right? It's a chronic illness. It afflicts now 40% of the world's population. That's a hugely serious number. Goodness, one in every five children is obese. You know, obese isn't just slightly overweight, it's majorly overweight. So uh, modern medicine would say if it's chronic, we should be treating it medically, right? And since you've lost, they'll, they'll say to their client or patient, since you've lost all this weight using these drugs, just keep taking them, keep taking them. And, you know, the objection we have, I suppose, to modern medicine is that it's in bed with big pharma. And so hand and glove thing here, right? They, um, rare is the position you go to who knows anything about nutrition or any kind of lifestyle interventions that we might counsel someone to receive. So what do we, what do we advise? What, what, what uh, does your alternative medicine intuitive, like myself or you, what do we offer instead of Ozempic and, um, and its sister drugs? Well, we talk about things like a nutritional diet. We'd encourage you to eat your client or you to eat a small meal every three or four hours and not try to just have three meals a day, but have six to eight. We talk about more plant-based protein. We talk along with fish and chicken. We would talk about reducing carbs, right? We'd suggest more walking, less sitting, you know, cut the TV watching down a bit, walk the dog kind of a deal. You might also consider some herbs. We have some images here of herbs that uh, for you to uh, give some thought to. There's uh, turmeric. I bet half the room here is I'll wait for Dina to flip to that slide of turmeric. About half the room is probably using turmeric. And um, it does help your body burn fat. It does. Think small, real small here, like, you know, 16th of a teaspoon, right? It does increase the heat of your body, so be careful. You might also consider a little bit of cinnamon. You know, you can toss a little cinnamon on your oatmeal. Another, by the way, fat-burning food is oatmeal. And... Uh, really cleans the body, oatmeal, but throw a little cinnamon on and, or you can put cinnamon in your tea. It'll help balance your blood sugar, keep you from getting too hungry. Or you could consider fenugreek. Fenugreek helps control your appetite, reduces the amount overall you eat. Uh, you could try cumin. Could add a little bit to a meal, help speed up your weight loss. Let's not forget about ginger. I love ginger. really helps with blood sugar. Be very careful if you have much pitta to have very much ginger. And I wouldn't ever have any ginger from May through October if I had much pitta, right? And then there's ginseng, of course, which slows fat absorption. All right. Thank you, Adina, for the little slideshow there. And you guys, please do not try fasting. Fasting is only suitable for... Um, one-third or to one-sixth of the population. Why is that? Because vatas can't fast. It's not safe. It'll throw your vata, your, your, your energy, if you're uh, the vata type, the wind type in uh, Ayurvedic or Chinese medicine, it'll completely skew it. Uh, pittas don't do well with fasting. Only kaphas do. And one-sixth of the population is a kapha something, Right. Rare is there a, a by dosha. That's very unusual. So fasting is not is not safe. It's not the way to go. It will just uh, uh, really skew your 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 uh, body mind balance, your body mind balance. So um, it it will really um, foul up your your sensitive uh, blood sugar balance. Okay, let's talk about viruses for a minute. So the big three, you're probably watching the news a little bit. You know that uh, there's a new strain of RSV, which probably of no interest to you as an adult. It's mostly for uh, small children that you think about that. It affects the lungs. You know, it's a respiratory disorder. You'll hear, you'll hear them talking about it on the news. Um, you would only worry about it, you know, if you were talking about a small child or maybe an elderly parent or relative of yours. Um, you know, you, you think about the possibility of pneumonia probably. And then, of course, there's COVID. You know, there's a new strain out. Uh, it's not that big a deal anymore, right? It's kind of become minor, sort of like a flu. Um, and then there's, speaking of the flu, there's the flu, right? And uh, COVID and the flu are here to stay. They're, you know, part of our um, 
part of our environment now. And um, um, I, you know, you're, you're, uh, if you're vaccine uh, inclined yourself, you're welcome to, you know, um, I head that direction. Uh, full disclosure, I've never had a flu, uh, flu shot in my life. And, and so I, I walk uh, both sides of this aisle pretty, pretty comfortably. It's entirely up to you. It's a very, it's a very personal decision. So those are the big three viruses for the year. Let's talk about how medical intuition looks at all of this. Okay. So most good medical intuitives, and I'm talking to you because you probably are one. If you aren't developed, you will be. Um, you're a wounded healer of one sort or another. Uh, we all seem to be. We've had wounds somewhere, if not this lifetime, perhaps a past lifetime. And it makes us hyper acute. We're, we're just more acute than the guy, maybe the guy out on the street. And um, if your parents were drug addicts or alcoholics or you survived uh, uh, child abuse like I did or whatever the situation was, it just makes you hyper acute. And um, you're already a natural born healer and natural born medical intuitive, if that's the case. But if you had just the greatest childhood in the world, I want you to know that uh, you can learn these skills either way, right? You don't have to have major childhood drama. People with empathy and personality insights become great intuitive medical practitioners. And um, a medical intuitive, what is that? That's somebody that can sense inside someone else's body. And we're not too good about sensing inside our own. We're better, always better at sensing someone else's. And you can get information about their their, their physical status, their spiritual status, their emotional status, their mental status. And we call that reading, you know, or gathering information. Um, if you've watched me work, you know that I don't need to be where you are in order to gather information. I just need your permission. But it's just as easily done here over Zoom or on the phone or just through the field, just as long as I have permission. And... Uh, you never drop in on someone and take a look without their express permission. There's no, um, uh, there's no uh, substitutes for that. And the other thing we never do is we don't diagnose. We don't. We, we drop in. We may hear things, sense things, smell things, feel things, but uh, we don't blurt out diagnoses. Um, that said, I actually accidentally did that just like a week or so ago. I was working with one of my level four uh, students in a private session. And the moment I looked at her, I thought, oh, my God, she's got long COVID. And I actually said so. I'm normally more tactful <laughs> than that. <laughs> um, but um, um, it was a big relief to her because she was trying to figure out why she was so tired. Um, but, yeah, we don't diagnose. That's, that's not our that, that's not our job. Um, we we get information about their health with their permission. We sense imbalances, and we gently guide and uh, give people a direction and do energy healing if if requested. Right? If requested. So, when I was a young practitioner, my first sense that got really acute, even as a child, was my sense of smell. I've always been able to smell diabetes cancer, death, I can just smell it, right? Now, these days, I'm more inclined to rely on my sense of hearing. It seems to become much more acute. I, I hear a lot of things. I, I'm handed a lot of words. Lots of times I'm given, speaking of diagnoses, lots of times I'm given a diagnosis. I just hear it. I may not even know what it is. So, you know, it's auditory. So you're getting information about your subject with permission from the unified field of all information. You're also getting it from their body and from environmental cues, right? So you already possess some of the clairs. There's clairvoyance, the one I like the least, which is clear seeing, but you have heard about it, I know. Then there's clear hearing, clear audience. I just mentioned that one. There's clarialescence, that's clear smelling. I just mentioned that one. There's clairgustience, that's clear tasting. Lots of times I can taste a prescription or street drug on a client. Um, and then there's clear cognizance, the one I probably rely on all the time, which is clear knowings. 
uh, don't look for that one too soon in your development of the clairs because it's the last one usually to come and requires the highest uh, level of spiritual awakening for it to be operationally correct. Otherwise, you're probably hearing your personality, which is often wrong, right? Our personalities are not higher guidance. Um, th- what I think interferes with the students getting good info the most is fear. They're, they're afraid they're going to be wrong. And if you study with me, you'll find out right away there's no such thing as being wrong because we're all getting information on different levels of the field. So um, you and I may look at the same client and you'll hear, um, I'll hear, um, you know, pneumonia and you'll hear smoking, right? You know, you're picking up smoking from the client's lungs and I'm picking up pneumonia from the client's lungs. We're just on slightly different channels. So never worry that you're going to be wrong uh, because I will support you in your search for accuracy. And you just hang around here very long and you'll get real good at it very quickly. It's, It's mostly just being validated by a teacher and you'll find out how good you are at this. So your amygdala, that's the part of your, your brain that signals danger, um, it, it is so active all the time. You're, you're afraid you're, you know, you're going to second guess yourself. So just get in touch with your emotions and with uh, cues that are all around us all the time. We're getting them from our environment and from our, our client who we're looking at, perhaps on Zoom, right? And uh, go for it. Go for it. So ancient cultures, you know, they from the Chinese to the Cheyenne Indians, they all had these techniques to tune into their intuition. And because they practiced them all the time, like we do here in the Deborah King Center, they got really good at it. They got really good at it. So every part of your body, every organ, every cell, uh, your mind, your spirit, all of you is uh, constantly giving you information that you could call medically intuitive. Some of about yourself, but a lot of it about others, about others. So your body, you know, is just like this powerhouse, right? It's of natural healing. I want to help you uh, charge it up and get it going. You just have to figure out how to get out of the way. And let's not forget about the chakras, right? They do matter. The chakras are the focal points in your, in your personal energy field. And, and the more open they are and the more operational they are from your focus on them and your energy healing of them, the, um, the better you'll work in that regard. Now, if you're new to me and um, uh, you uh, are unfamiliar with energy healing, you can go to DebraKing.com forward slash, I have to remember what it is. Um, let me go look. It's forward slash level one, the number one, forward slash level one. You can go there if you're interested in seeing um, uh, the, my introduction to energy healing. So let's talk about homeopathy for just a second, because I always like to mention that it's a kissing cousin to energy healing. So energy healing is our field. Homeopathy uh, mm-hmm. may be yours, or you may use homeopathy. It's a wonderful, wonderful source of medical help right? It uses minute, microscopic, infinitesimal, uh, um, below the level of sight amounts of certain like, it works on the law of similar, so it picks something that produces the same effect as the problem you have and cures it that way. And I hope you all get the chance to try homeopathy at some point in your lives. Um, It does require uh, either training or a homeopathist uh, but I always me- mention it because um, it works so well with energy healing. It's so similar to what we do. I'll talk just for a moment about the gut-brain access. Um, now, that's another kissing cousin of ours, functional medicine. I'd be curious to see a show of hands here, how many people have been to a functional medicine expert. Lots of times they're, they're um, yeah, it's real popular, huh? Lots of times they are um, nurse practitioners. Um, the one I uh, used to go to was a nurse practitioner. God, I just loved her. Called her Dr. Bonnie. She was just so good. And then I moved away. Darn. Um, it's so similar to in our energy healing world. They, they, they're on the same page. They're totally on the same page as we are. And they really recognize, as we do, how our emotions can jeopardize our health. 
So the, the little brain in our gut, that's the brain, the gut brain axis, that little brain down there has a hundred million nerve cells, you guys, just in your, in your gastrointestinal tract. And if you have bloating or upset stomach or irritable bowel, you know, anything all, all the way down, it's mostly stress usually. And problems there, that little brain in your gut can also cause depression and anxiety. So the best thing for that is to meditate, meditate, meditate. I hate to harp on that all the time, but uh, I can't say it often enough. And if you're not meditating, please let me teach you. Um, don't know my shortcut for that. Dean will have to provide it for me. I know it's forward slash something, but offhand, I don't know it. I love to teach meditation and um, ha have a really simple format you can learn if you're not meditating. Now, according to my field, which is Ayurveda, that's the East Indian medical preventative system I use and teach, uh, we would urge you to think, do things like sesame oil in your diet, lentils, nuts, uh, salmon, fruit, right? That'll all reduce inflammation in the gut. And besides meditating and eating right, um, uh, we want to have protective nutrients in our body, right? And be sure you're getting enough vitamin D. So half of America, just to focus on this country for a moment, is not getting enough vitamin D. I find that always so shocking. Half, half of the whole United States isn't getting enough D. Um, I know we're above the equator. That's one of the reasons, by the way, is we're not as close to the sun. But um, uh, you, you can get vitamin D out of a bottle, right? I mean, it would be great if we could all spend... 20 minutes outdoors every day, nude from, you know, our neck to our knees. But most of us don't either have the weather or the time, <laughs> the, the nice enough weather or the time to do that. So please do take vitamin D. Be sure to every day. Do you know that um, uh, you're much more likely to test positive for COVID if your vitamin D level is low? It's real high, especially for African-Americans, um, vitamin D uh, inadequacies and shortages. Um, the ratio is just is just incredible with the vitamin D shortage. You want something above 70. Your, your primary care physician will tell you 30 is just fine, but don't listen to him or her. You want 70, 80, 90. Even 90 is great for vitamin D level. And you can check your level on Amazon. Order a kit from Amazon and just, you know, give it a check. It's a pinprick. Um, now let's talk about avoiding electromagnetic fields, another source of stress for you that a medical intuitive will often pick up on when they look at you they may feel that you're too you've got too em, too many emfs in your field electromagnetic forces don't carry your phone on your body um you know consider using wi-fi instead of cellular data i'm guilty of using cellular data it's handy isn't it be sure to turn your router off at night give your house a wi-fi zone free for eight hours just figure out which closet the thing's in and learn how to turn it off. Don't sleep with your phone on in the bedroom. Ugh. Ah. Don't do that. Make sure it's completely off. Um, never hold your phone to your ear. I don't think anybody does that anymore, I hope, right? Don't um, set your laptop on your lap. Have it on a, have it on a laptop pillow. Um, hang a piece of raw silk over the back of your chair. It will absorb the EMFs in your, it doesn't have to be against the chair you're sitting in, a chair in your room. It has to be raw. It has to be raw silk. It can't be processed. And I hate this one, but you know, our, our, uh, all AC power emits EMFs. We, we really should unplug our devices, you know, like your toaster and your hairdryer and so forth. Uh, one of the best ways to reduce your stress levels, get outside. Even 10, 15 minutes, go outside and just look at the horizon, look at the trees, bring your circadian rhythm into balance. Be sure you're you know, going, to, going to bed not long after the sun sets and get up a little bit before the sun rises. Make you much more serene. 20 minutes in natural surroundings will really make you so much more balanced. And uh, just last week, I wrote about forest bathing. You guys read my newsletter and my blog last week. Forest bathing is what the Japanese call, you know, hanging out with trees in a forest. What a lovely practice that is, right? And then exercise. We can't skip that, right? We absolutely cannot. And you have to walk or 
take an online class or um, dance in the living room, lift a few weights, something, move, move your body around. So, you know, all the ancient civilizations, they knew these things. They practiced these things. They, they were really good with their intuition. They could, the shaman could just look at you and sense uh, what you needed, what your needs were. Now, I created, uh, for those of you who've been with me a while, you know this, I created a pretty amazing seven-week course on medical intuition, which is just being reopened right now. I want to tell you about it. If you don't have it, you probably want to pick it up. Um, I, I take each intuitive gift and I develop it week after week. And um, if you've ever felt something was wrong, but you couldn't put your finger on it, uh, in this course, you'll learn enough basic anatomy to, to help you do more accurate intuitive readings. And you'll have a much better understanding of the physical body and, and its energy system, its energy field. So I use a lot of history and science and experiential practices. It's a very experiential class. Um, if you're um, um, trying to, you know, interpret information you're getting from uh, someone else because you're practicing and you have their permission, right, to look, this class will really help you because it, it covers how to awaken your intuitive gifts, how to activate the seat of your intuition, how to scan bodies, how to give readings, how to journey through time and space to get better info out there. We'll, we'll focus in on what's may, maybe blocking you. There are a lot of exercises, a lot of practices, a lot of dynamic meditations. Um, I spent a year developing this class. It's, uh, it's really well-developed. And I also go into quite a bit of depth on colors, healing with colors, healing with light, healing with essential oils. And... You can build a career as a medical intuitive, just as I have. You can. Um, you just need training. You need training. And um, I talk a lot about, just to think about what I teach there, I talk quite a bit about Edgar Casey in the first module. I spend quite a bit about him and the, the uh, various clairs. And um, in module two, I go into a lot of Ayurvedic uh, understandings uh, and and I focus in on the uh, muscles and the reproductive system. So I do a system each module, a system or two. And we look at the second level of the energy field. We looked at the first level in module one. And then module three is all about glandular health and glandular wisdom, which is something you probably want to know about yourself. If you're over 30, which you probably are, your glands now become much more important to you. You want to know which one keys to which chakra, by the way. And so that might explain why you have problems with your thyroid gland or your pineal gland. You might think about the related chakra, right? Um, lots of guided meditations in this class. In the fourth module, I, I focus on, as I should, right, on the higher heart, um, your uh, thymus, thymus gland and um, on unconditional love. And, you know, it's all about the spiritual stuff in Module 4. The Module 4 is like the chakras. It's the bridge. The fourth module is the bridge between the body and the spirit. So there I focus in on cardiovascular health and respiratory system. Makes sense, right? You're, you're fourth. And I talk about Carl Jung quite a bit there. And then in Module 5, um, I, I work on um, your ancestral DNA, and we do some journeys in time and space there. And as far as the energetic anatomy journey, we focus in on the lymphatic system and the excretory system, really important ones, right? And we work on how to align with divine will. So it's from six and seven, right? Um, you, you'll, by then, by the sixth module, you'll start to have looked at all these samples and people you'll start to have a pretty good feel of how to do a reading. I would say you'd be pretty good by then. And in module six, I do the colors, all the colors that impact our human energy field, your aura. Uh, you learn how to leverage colors. We'll address the nervous system and the sensory system at that point. Um, we'll look at the sixth level of our human energy field. And uh, we'll talk about the Akashic records. So... That's the storehouse, right, of all the information that I, when I'm seeking and you're asking me questions about yourself, 
That's where I go, the Akashic Records. And then in Module 7, the final module, we talk about how to tune up your intuition, how to strengthen it, how to make it stronger. And we'll, we'll really um, activate the pineal gland at that point. Uh, we'll ha- I have an exercise that does that. And we'll do some guided meditations. We'll go from the information age to the age of, inquis- age of intuition. And, of course, there are lots of bonuses, right? There's, um, there's a quiz um, to test your psychic ability. There's um, some special um, information about Hildegard of Bingham. She's one of my favorite saints, an early, early herbalist and healer, female healer. Very interesting from the 12th century. And I talk about pranayama. I help you address limiting beliefs about money so that that doesn't limit you as you become a, a compensated medical intuitive, right? You should be compensated. You'll learn how you, you – know, there's a bonus about how to perceive colors better. And uh, there's one on the Upanishads, one of my favorite parts of the ancient Vedic teachings, the Upanishads. So, and then you get certified here. You'll, you'll receive one of my – um, medical intuitive certifications that you can hang on your website or your wall or wherever. And I open you now to questions about your medical intuition or yourself, questions about yourself. You can raise your hand and tell me about you. We can do a reading right now. Who wants to do that? Don't, don't wait. Go ahead. Is that Tracy got her hand in the air? No? Yeah, go ahead, Tracy. You're first. You just have to unmute. Um, sorry, I'm not sure what you meant by that. <laughs> Let me turn you up a little bit. I'm not quite hearing you. Sorry. Um, can you hear me now? I can. Welcome. What city are you in? I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. <laughs> hmm. Kiara. Great to have you. Yeah, great Bye. to have you. <laughs> Uh-huh. Um, I'm sorry. Someone asked to go first. I wasn't sure. No worries. Just- no worries. You 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 think about yours, and we'll go to Sonia. Sonia, just bring your camera live so I can see you. Huh? Yeah, I'm trying to find my camera button. Hold on one second, because I'm driving too. Okay, sorry. it's right down <laughs> there by the mute button. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, start my video. There's that one. And just while Sonia's here. looking for it, um, if you go to DebraKing.com forward slash physical, you can find an outline of what I was just talking about. Yeah, I can hear you, Sonia. Go ahead. Okay. I can um, hear you. Yeah, I would just like an overall. Um, turn this off. I would just like an overall reading of. W- what you're seeing within me, I've been, I'm involved in a um, uh, self-development course, and it, it we're, we're dealing with Kriyas and Kundalini energy. So my body's been going through some things, getting rid of negative energy, left a bad relationship in May. And Are you driving I'm, right now? No, I'm in. I'm in line right now, waiting for gas. Um, so I just. I just think that some of the things that I'm feeling is like energy releasing from time to time, but I just don't know. Like I had a situation this morning and I was low on potassium. So I figured that out. I took my potassium. I'm feeling much better now. So, um, yes, I'd just like to know if you're picking up anything. And what was the city again? City, uh, city, Seattle, Washington. Seattle. Okay. Well, you're in your mental body right now. That's the third level of your field. So I'm, I'm sensing your mind very strongly. And my suggestion would be probably to think less and feel more. Yeah. Does that feel I like a I've bit? I think I've born that way. I've always been in uh-huh. my head, yes. Yeah, you're a thinker. And, yeah. And uh, you're, 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 uh, you're overthinking and um, overanalyzing. Yes. I can see that. Yeah. So the thing for you, Sonia, would be to get outside, uh, do outside things, and do and meditate things that are not requiring mental thinking. Yeah. 
I used to meditate a lot and I'm trying, uh -huh. I'm getting back into it, but oh, I got good. the monkey mind thing going on and uh, uh -huh. I'm having issues getting outside of that and just really getting uh -huh. in the zone with meditation. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Let me encourage you back to meditation. It'd be just a ticket for you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Nice Are you seeing anything else? You. Thank you. Are you seeing anything not, else? I'm not. I, I'm not. Nope. Your mental body okay. is, is very pronounced. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. You That's feel, wonderful. Thank you, you otherwise so feel You feel very healthy. Okay. That's good to hear. That takes a load yeah. off because I'm, you know, I'm okay, in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. And yes, Todd. Todd, you have your hand up. Not hearing you yet, though, Todd. Nope, no sound. Am I the only one that's not able to hear Todd? I hey, don't Todd, hear Todd let's <laughs> encourage, <laughs> encourage you to work on. Oh, there you are. Go ahead. I just heard you. Oh, he went away again. Can I ask you to go out and come back? That may fix that. Okay. And Iris, you're next. Hi, Iris. What city are you in? Hi, Deborah. I'm in Santa Rosa, California. Uh huh. Okay. How can I help you? Uh, I feel very emotionally unsettled. And uh, I know that I need to be on a path, but my conventional path that I've been on in terms of work doesn't seem to satisfy me. And uh, your email came up about uh, healing and medical intuition, and that was the word uh -huh. I wrote in my journal yesterday, healer. And it seems very scary to think mm -hmm. that. So I'm feeling this uh, emotional unsettled. And I just... Uh, is this common for you or is this a new feeling? I would say it's new, it's new in the last few months. New mm -hmm. in the last year, maybe. A big I, changes I, I, um, in a relationship? Oh, well, I lost my horse a year ago. Oh my! And I know yeah. you know how that is. I do. Yeah, yeah it feels like I thought um, you'd lost some significant relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's very uh, unsettling. It, you know, you know, our horses are so grounding for us. Mm hmm. Yeah. What was his name? Uh, Bo. B e a u. Oh, how lovely! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, his, well, his, he's not his, far his, from you, Iris. He's he's not far from your field, you know. Thank you for yeah. saying that. You could probably hear him whinny out there. Yeah. He's not very far out of your field. I can sense him. Good. Yeah, how lovely. Yeah, you're. Um, um, can you go buy somebody else's horse farm and pet some horses? It would be very settling for you. Yes, where I used to keep them, uh, they let me go, uh -huh. and I can go. Uh, there's a a a, a, a what? Bo is a black horse. There's a white horse named Cotton, uh, and uh -huh. then I can care for him and and work him and feed him some carrots. Yes, that's what yes. Cotton's asking for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's what you need. Okay, you need some. You need an infusion of horse. Thank you. You'll be you'll be fine. It'll just it'll just pull you right down. You're just Thank a little you. bit like that. Yeah, I can feel it. Okay. Yeah. How nice to have you, Iris. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and for you guys, before I take the next person, uh, you see that link over there in the chat window that DebraKing.com forward slash physical. You can click on that and you can see the page I was just describing about this course. My um medical intuitive course it's it's a uh, it's a really uh, it's a really strong course if you're interested in doing uh, this sort of stuff for yourself or others okay anika where are you hi right now i'm hi. on lake on, on i'm on lake huron normally i'm closer to toronto so i'm in canada uh-huh uh okay and nice i'm one you. of your level thank you i'm one of your level 4 students and Welcome. I'm looking forward Wonderful. to coming to, to Sarah. 
Um, oh, wonderful. That's just coming up soon. That's um, just a month away. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have uh, chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemia, and I'm wondering whether you have any suggestion for me. Let me just uh, feel it. And how long has that diagnosis been? Two years. Given? Two years? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And unfortunately, lately, the numbers have gone up. I am working with a natural path, cleaning out my liver and my kidney considerably. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm feeling quite well, thanks to your meditation and everything I'm doing uh -huh. through you. Uh, what does Western I, medicine I, offer for this? Uh, at this point, nothing. When the uh, numbers go too high, I will have to go on an oral chemo uh, drug, which I'm really wanting to avoid because avoid, once I start, if that, possible, uh huh, exactly. Yeah, you feel good right now. I can sense it though, and um, uh, I'm not familiar with um, what's the drug called. I'm not picking it up, probably uh, because uh, you're not uh, on it yet. It's called a Kela Buxinet or something like that. Uh huh. It's, yeah. Uh huh. I think um, it, should you go that route? Should you you know need to go that route at some point? It doesn't feel as um, as daunting as you might think. I I I'm not sensing that it would be problematic. Hmm. If if it turns out that you know that that's uh, something you have to explore. Thank you. Um, but you may not need to. I can't tell. It's it, it's not clear right now. It's not clear. And uh, your health is is other than that is quite strong, quite strong. Is that a German accent I'm hearing or Dutch? Yes, German. German. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, you have great uh, you have great um, family uh, lineage DNA and real strong physically your your ancestors mm. were very fit um longevity i keep hearing yeah so yeah yeah you're gonna weather this anika this thank is just you. a little That's bump something. in the road little bump in the road yeah thank you i look forward to seeing you just in a month at uh, anika's talking about uh, she's one of my LFEH, my Life Force Energy Healing Level 4 students, one of my new students. I only take 20 a year, and I'll be working with her personally at a place called uh, Sarah Retreat in Malibu that hangs over the ocean. It's pretty nice. So I'll see you there, Anika. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. And uh, if we could get a link uh, to Level 4 over here for in the meeting chat, that would be great because we have one opening. We still have one opening. Um, and um, is it Petia? Where are you, Petia? Uh, I'm in Chicago. Uh huh. How can I help you? So uh, I've been having a lot of medical problems, and during the last few months, I got a lot of testing, but we didn't really get anywhere. So I'm wondering what you think the main. What problem. are the sim What are the symptoms? Uh, well, we tested for uh, breast cancer uh, on the left side. And the results were negative? Uh, well, the one spot that we did a biopsy was negative, but um, I had a bloody nipple discharge, so they said this does, doesn't resolve the issue. Uh-huh, doesn't resolve it, right. You're, um, you said you're in Chicago? Yes. You're, um, well, let, me, let me look at you Ayurvedically first. Are you familiar with Ayurveda? A little bit? A little, maybe? A little bit, yes. Yeah, you are um, um, Kapha Pitta. You've got quite a bit of earth and a fair amount of fire. And um, you feel uh, too hot to me. Of course, it's the end of summer. So you might have gotten pretty hot during the summer from a variety of things. Um, feels mainly like anger. That's what I'm picking up most. Okay, that's possible. You know, you know who you're mad at or what you're uh, mad about? Yes. yes, I do know. And I have been having like um, 
Uh, I, I'm, I've been feeling hot a lot lately, but the weather is not hot. I bet. Yeah. No, you're hotter than a firecracker. And um, you want to cool that down. So no matter what the breast cancer situation may or may not be, which isn't clear, by the way, um, uh, you want to cool yourself down. So cool emotions. Um, anger is nothing more than a um, – it, it's, it's actually not – what we think it is, it's actually fear that's been misdirected. So you want to get behind that feeling of anger and find out what's, what, what you're afraid of. Because what we do is we project our anger out on somebody or something, but it's really a fear. And, um, and I think you can deal with it quite easily once you track it, Petia. I think you can. Okay. You're, yeah, and you're... Um, like one of the gals we just looked at, your health is otherwise good. So whatever this is, this could be just a little thing. Mm -hmm. um, but the anger is not a little thing. That's the thing you need to address. Okay, so that, that's going to mm -hmm. resolve it. Yeah. Um, do you feel yeah. anything, uh, my thyroid is going a little kind of... It's slow, right? It's a little low? Mm -hmm. Is, is that what you're being told? Um, one of the antibodies are really high. Yeah, because it's a little under, uh, it's a little underactive. I can see it in your eyes. So okay. they'll, a good endocrinologist will track that for you. Okay. You should see a good endocrinologist. Thank you. Get your primary to refer you. Notice, you guys, I use Western medicine quite a bit for diagnosis. There's nothing wrong with it. You want all, and, and Petia, you want everybody on your team. You want, you, we don't want to close off ourselves from uh, good care. It can come from anywhere. It could be, you know, your, your, your surgeon, your oncologist, your nutritionist, your energy healer. Don't foreclose anything. Don't, don't just take one little pocket of uh, health. You know, mm -hmm. open, your, open your mind like a parachute. Get everybody on your team because different people will be helpful to you at different times. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask quickly, is fasting good for my type? Not great, no. No. Okay. No, you're you're too uh too delicate. Okay. You have Thank too you much so fire. Much. It'll make the fire too hot. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So and cook, cook, okay. cooked meals. The summertime is okay for raw stuff, but not not in the fall, you guys. We're almost October. We should all be eating food that's slightly cooked. Not, not to the point where the nutrients are gone, but, you know, cooked vegetables and warm, warm food, not icy food. It's, you know, it's almost October. Mm -hmm. Unless you're in Australia, and then I'd be telling you the opposite. <laughs> Very nice to meet you, Petia. Okay, thank you so much. Very welcome. Bye-bye. And Donna. Oh, Donna Bruno. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. Nice Deborah, to see you. How are one you? Of my, Good to see one you. One of my new level fours, right? Yep. Very right. excited. Yeah, so I'm excited to have you. Thank you, lovey. I have a realization. I wanted to uh, get your opinion about this. So as a child, I had a learning disability about ADHD and processing. And I recently learned that children who have that, they can have, which I believe I've had since I'm six years old, rejection-sensitive rejection dysphoria. And then compounding that with PTSD, my brain system six spiral outs very quickly with rejection and that caused over time to have depression and anxiety. Um, so I'm thinking my brain, I'm a nurse practitioner. So this is what I'm thinking. My brain is rooted to go in the same direction over and over time because, you know, when I get rejected, I, may not take it's penetrating me faster and harder than maybe someone else that doesn't have um, the RSD, the rejection sensitive dysphoria. So I tried to um, meditate and think of myself as knowing because I'm science. Can I interrupt for just yeah, a yes, second, Donna? Yes, I want to get you out of your, uh, your, you're stuck in your mind. Okay. Yeah, and you're very good at that, and and so we're all spinning because <laughs> because um, you you threw up a big smoke screen. We're trying to see through it. 
Right. Because uh, you want us to see, um, but but I'm trying to fight through the smoke. Okay. Um, so uh, your biggest gift isn't going to be um, the, the, all that book learning that you have. It's going to be your intuition. And uh, you've got a big uh, third eye that's open. So I want to encourage you to think less, which sounds like a weird thing to say to somebody, but in your case, um, less would be more. And just feel, and just feel about yourself and others. So you have a, did you say you were a nurse practitioner? Yes. Yeah, you got a lot of training, a lot of training. And uh, uh, you're, you're going to be just amazing at this because you've got the medical link already there. What an advantage Donna has, you guys. So to work on the anxiety and depression and not have the RSV, are you suggesting not to think as much? Or is that what you- I'm suggesting some outdoor time, outdoor um, time, being with trees or flowers or butterflies or, yeah, outdoor time for you and less knowledge-based. Okay. Uh, that, that, um, that's, that's not what you need. You've got a lot of that already. You okay. need the other. So w- when I was in my f- mid-40s, I took up horses because I knew that's what I needed. I was too mental. You know, mm-hmm. as a lawyer, right? I, I kept going that way because that's what I was good at. But in fact, what I needed to do was develop the other side of my brain. Mm-hmm. And horses will do that. Being a forest, outdoors will do it. Uh, meditating helps. But animals are one of the quickest ways there. I have two small dogs, which I love. Wonderful. Spend yeah. time with them in the forest. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> right. Very welcome. Thank you. And uh, you're welcome. And uh, the next person's last name, I guess, is Doe. Don't see your, I need a camera, though, to do a good read. I can do it on your voice, but it's more fun for everybody if they can see you. Yep, I can So you guys it. may, there it uh, is. I'll take your time. There it is. Hi there. Ooh. And uh, you're out in the light a little bit, huh? What's your first name? Oh, Fawn. Fawn. How nice to meet you. Where are you, Fawn? Nice to meet you, too. Um, I'm in uh, Portage, Michigan. Uh huh. And your question, how can I help you? Um, what, what I'd like to know, I, like, um, okay, I'm having, I, I, I had a, a diagnosis where there were like, uh, like a colorectal tumor. Thank you. And- and then and then it was and then they did another one and it was gone but i'm still having some really symptoms that would for me feel like there's definitely something going on in that area of my body um i i'm having difficulty um like it's painful um i feel like bloated a lot and very uncomfortable uh, well, sometimes. let's just look at you Ayurvedically for a minute, Vaughn. You're very, uh, you got a lot of the uh, earth, got a lot of pitta and pitta, uh, pardon me, kapha. And kapha people tend to move uh, a little slower and their whole system moves a little more slowly, right? Um, I think that's all it is. Uh, I, I would, in, in your case, I'd say you might need a little more exercise. Okay. I, wa- keep things, I was keep things moving a bit. Like- Three days. I was walking like three miles a day, and I was. I've had uh-huh. a lot of trauma, and I've been around animals my entire life. And uh-huh. for the last last six months, I've been completely alone and have lost um, all of my uh-huh. animals. So, well, get yourself all- an animal or two. You know, get something back Is and that- walk and walk again. Yeah, you're you're. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it's that'd been be really very painful. helpful to you. You shouldn't be alone, Fawn. Okay, I don't like. I, yeah, I don't think that that's good for me either. But I'm no, having no, it isn't. Making, you know, making going down connection. to the shelter. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, it is the pain. Like I'm ha- the, the reason. One of the reasons I stopped walking was because it just was too painful to walk. Like all of my. Can you body- swim? Pardon me. Is there any way you can go swimming? Is there a pool nearby? Uh, I love water. There's, there's nowhere that actually there is a pool that I can find. Um, mm-hmm. th- there's a place. Think so about that. I know it's getting late in the season, but a uh, heated pool would be great for you. 
Oh, uh, okay. I hope I can work right. that. Are out. you in my soul family? Um, I don't know that I am, but I this really talked to me because I've I've been doing healing work, but uh-huh. it all stopped with the uh, the heartbreak, the trauma. I just kind of oh, stopped, and so I felt sorry. like. Yeah. yeah, I kind of felt like maybe that's not my path. And but then I saw mm-hmm. your email and I was like, uh-huh. well, I have to be take honest. A minute. Because- take a minute and look in the meeting chat at the it's a third link down. It's called no, it isn't second link down. It's called forward slash level one. Click there and you can come join my soul family. I'd love to have oh. you and you wouldn't be so alone. Oh, You'd be with all you. these people. All yeah, right. Love to have. And you. so you I'm don't pick up anything that I need to worry about. It's just slow. Meta- everything slowed down. It is. Yes. Okay. I was really, I, when you were talking to the other person, I thought it was fire. I thought, man, I'm just running too much fire. But thank you for the no, clarity. I really too much earth. It. Yeah. Okay. You I'm take definitely, care, Fawn. Thank you. Uh-huh. I appreciate you very much. And Diane, where are you, Diane? Hi. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. And, okay. Um, well, I had all kinds of thoughts. It keeps <laughs> it keeps switching, but I guess I'll since everybody's taken from the medical side, I'll take it. I had you can take it from any a, side. Yeah, I, I got into a dermatologist for something completely different, and spirit was screaming at me to have them look at my back, even though that was it was something on my leg. And when they looked, they found melanoma. Um, they caught it early. Uh, it was stage zero, actually. Unbelievable. It was a slow moving. Um, I'm trying. I've I've Googled. On was it to, um, was it in C2? It feels like it was in C2. S-I-T-U. They didn't mention oh, that. Oh, yes. That's yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, I had a cousin that died from it. My dad had part of his oh, face scary. scary from it. So mm-hmm. it's made me paranoid about being in the sun obviously i'm very careful now i'm trying to change my diet making it mediterranean style you're taking a, a lot of d right if you're out of the sun oh, yeah. you're taking plenty of vitamins. Yeah, when you were talking d, about d, d like, be sure it's d3 d3 yes i mm-hmm. i take enough of that um so i i i just wanted to they said that once you well let's one, help you um Let's just, uh, can I work with you for just a second? Because sure, I want to dissolve ahead. that. I'm going to dissolve that fear I'm picking up of um, what happened to your cousin and your dad isn't your path, okay? There's no sense holding on to that. You don't have to identify with that. Okay. Just let that go. You're on your own path with your own physiology and your own DNA. You don't have your cousins. I, I yeah. have. That, yeah, there's good. no sense identifying with that. Yeah. Yeah, and they, this was just in, in situ and they caught it and. It's really common. I would just let that go. It doesn't mean that you have any any other uh, reason to think you'd have that. She freaked the aden- the doctor said yeah. that once you have melanoma, you're open to all cancers. Well, so I think that's, that's pretty true of all cancer. <laughs> so that's you know of all. I don't things, think that I was the most guided thought, remark. <laughs> yeah, I know. Of all things, I never thought that was going to be what was going to get me. You know, I just and how nice of him. Out. How nice of him to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. You got to laugh. I'm going to be. Oh God! What are they going to say next? Right. Yeah. Right. So I just. Um, I know I have um, some medical intuitive stuff. Uh, inside of course, of me. you do. You have all kinds of gifts. Um, and I just, I mean, I, I would love to turn it in, inward and find all of my problems, but, but I guess that's, that's probably It's really hard for lot. us to see ourselves. It, no, yeah. it's very hard to see ourselves. But the more you look at others and are trained to look at others, the easier it is for you to see yourself. Right. That's a fact. Well, come, come, I mean, study, uh, come study this class. I do. Again, I, you guys, to, to catch it, you just click on debraking.com forward slash physical. You see that link down there? Okay, it's the bottom one. Just gra- grab it. Come, come, take a look at it, Diane. See what you yeah, think. Yeah, I, I definitely need to. Well, mm-hmm. thanks for taking the. Uh, You're welcome. Very nice connecting of, with you. Of being yeah. Irish off me. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm as Irish as they get. And, and right, you don't need and, that. We, we we catch more of that bad stuff, of that bad <laughs> skin stuff. Yeah, but we have more fairies. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. 
How about Liz? Hi, Liz. Where are you? Okay. Hi there. I'm in St. Louis also. <laughs> okay. Good to um, see you. Thank you. How can uh, I help you? I um, was diagnosed with brain cancer a year ago and had it treated with some radiation. And now I have no more treatment, but it, it is still there. Um, so I'm what I what impacted me is that I kind of lost my short term memory. And it makes it difficult for me to learn new things. And I'm is and it I'm, benign? It feels feels no. benign. Am I reading it wrong? Well, uh -huh. unless it has mm. shifted. It just got about 15% smaller and it was pretty big. It's a, a left temporal. Um too big so to take it's, out. It's uh, yeah, too big and it was a glioma, so it went all over the place. Oh but, okay, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. I don't know why it feels the, so benign. That's interesting. Well, they said it can be it's a good static. Thing. It's been treated. And it could be mm -hmm. static and just sitting there, mm -hmm. just sitting there. I would love my my whole life. I wanted to be a healer. Started out pre med. There that you are. For me. Well, yeah. I'm thinking now. No more. Mm -hmm. Is it left brain, right brain? I can't remember. Um, no more of that. And I've been a website developer, so no more of that. Like serious brain kind of stuff. I'm being guided to sort of move to the intuitive side well and your, be a your, your glio is on your left side right uh the glioma yeah what the main tumor is and all mm -hmm. the tendrils got burned up in the radiation mm -hmm. so they're gone so it's just one solid yeah because your intuitive centimeter. your intuitive gifts are all on the other side right so that's why i'm thinking okay maybe this is the time now to it shift is. to that but my short-term memory is shot. So when I learn new things, I have a very hard time retaining them. So how well, can I love find this success field. doing that? Yeah. You know. Well, let me just interject something. You'll love this field. You'll love it. Okay. Because, because all the information I get from you, the client, whoever you may be talking to me today, I will not remember 10 minutes from now. Uh, this is really aggravating, though, to my students who come all the way to Malibu to see me next month. And they'll think, well, I just told Deborah that on the medical intuition uh, class, or I just told her that in a private session. I don't, there is no short term memory of this. It just comes in and comes through. You're the vessel. You, 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 thanks to this challenge you've had from spirit, which you, uh, I can sense, were very, agreeable about and not blaming or but just kind of it, it open felt to change like a blessing and right. a, an awareness came about exactly and like in a now what great now you're now, now you're the natural is. healer and you can heal people like mad now and they won't uh, tomorrow you won't remember what you told them today and that's perfect <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah. no short-term so, memory required for this but on no. learning, let's say if I attend your um, seven-week course, my concern is that I won't be able to return retain what I'm learning in the class to then. You don't apply. have to. You don't no. have to. All you have to do is is no. All you have to do is open up the uh, intuitive gifts, which, as I say, come and go every moment. Okay. There, there is no retention required. Not to worry. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very welcome. Fun talking to you, Liz, and would Thanks love so to much. keep keep track of you. Now, you guys, if you join my soul family, which is that forward slash level one, I can actually interact with you there. That's my private soul family page where I go and hang out. I appreciate um, that. Yeah, no, I'd love to see you there. How about uh, Tracy? You tried before, right? Yeah. But we couldn't hear you. Now we can. Or now you have your yeah. question. Yeah, I've got a bit camera shy. <laughs> Um, uh, I've had a, like, I can, I can feel surgery two years ago. Um, and since then, I've, my weight's increased. Um, I've, what's increased? You know, my weight. Uh huh. Like the subject matter of the beginning of my talk. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm on Got it. My, my blood pressure medication. And last year, at, um, an energy healer, just randomly said, oh, I can need to take care of your heart house. I'm just wondering if you can pick up anything. 
I don't know what you said about last year, something about an energy healer. I'll tell you what I do pick up. Um, I pick up a strong, um, well, you have a really strong guide who's uh, very pronounced in your energy field, who is um, it, it's in your lineage. It's native. It's a, it's a man. Do you have a, a heritage that is um, what is it? It's um, I can't hear you. Mommy. Mary. Uh huh. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, really strong. Wow. Ooh. Um. Uh, you're actually initiating, so that means that you're bringing in a higher level energy right now, and I'm going to stand up and do a good job on it, um, and help you help just help you with that. Okay. And uh, hmm, well, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, he's always with you. Beautiful. Good for you. Ah, oh, Tracy, who are you? Huh? Can't quite hear you, but I can sure feel that. All right. I think we'll be my day. Your dad, okay. I think maybe it's older than that too. He may be oh, there really? also. Yeah, it's quite old. I, right. I um, I lost my name of this year. That's why I'm a bit upset. Oh, as well. Uh huh. Well, I'm so glad you came back. That was uh, that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Okay, we got time for one more. Is it Dana? Where are you, Dana? St. Louis, Missouri. God, all these people from St. Louis. I know. It's like a chain. How can I help you? So I wanted the reading from you about my gifts, my ET Vita, and I always imagine to be initiated on the face-to-face, -face, but I guess oh. not today for me. I was like, she <laughs> got it. <laughs> <laughs> And then I also have a left side, a lower back pain and see if there's anything you can pick up on that. I have to drop back down. I'm still on a higher level. Let me come back in. <laughs> I'm not going to read anything physical up there. Um, I'm not getting the back pain. I'm not getting any source of that. And... Um, You've got, you two have an ethnic tradition you need to connect more deeply to. It's on your, I think, maternal side. Okay. Uh, and um, are you in my soul family? Yes. And I also saw you chakra classes, medical education, mm -hmm. energy healing. I've been doing oh. your meditation for a while at least six months for the wonderful uh, sacred tools for the modern masters master of my sutra class. Uh huh. Yeah. I enjoy wonderful, that. Very much. Yeah. I'd like to work with you a little bit. I wonder if I could on the next soul call. It's a little, uh, I can't do it right now. I don't have enough time. I can see uh, something needs to be released and uh, so I'm being told that it's premature. And I'm, for some reason, supposed to wait. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, it, uh, I'm just hearing uh, something something about the personality. They, <laughs> they want you to wait. That might mean something to you. Probably does. What about the ET Vita type for me? What kind of type? Yes. You said that they talk typically like too much earth, fire. I was curious. Oh, uh -huh. your Ayurvedic type. You feel pretty balanced right now. I'm not sensing any imbalances. You feel healthy. And you feel imbalanced with the seasons. Imbalance with the seasons, yeah. All right. Very nice connecting with you. Be sure to raise your hand on my next soul call. I will. I'll be there. Thank okay. you. All right. 
So I wish I had time to meet with all you guys. It's great seeing you. Don't don't uh, don't hang up yet. Um, I would love to see you. Um, uh, uh, the best way to connect with me personally is to join level one. That's forward slash level one. I can actually see you there. And um, we have calls pretty often. Um, and then I can chat with you on the soul page. So uh, if you're interested in what we did today, you want to go to that forward slash physical. And I'll send you another email about this uh, today. Uh, it, it is a really robust uh, teaching course about medical intuition. And if you want to ramp up your whole life and jumpstart the thing, I do have one, one spot open in, in uh, level four, and that's the, just looking at the links over here, that's the top link. It's LFEH Roman numeral four. If you're curious about that, you want to click on that. That's where I work individually with just 20 people a year. All right, you guys, thank you for coming. I had a really good time. Love doing intuitive medical readings. Just love it. Take care. Thank you.